come to the 25% of these or in Monaco taking place to tie in with the actual Monaco Grand Prix that's uh, happening this weekend so should be good just about to start now on the grid in the McLaren of Jensen Button starting 7th and away we go clean getaway in about going to the first corner hit Vettel on the back there and then someone smashed into me, Massa smashed into the back of me there, that's not not great. <coughs> Clipping the barrier there, spinning, managed to hold it. Pretty pretty lucky there. Got away with it. It's always a always a risk in Monaco. Trying to avoid barriers and other cars, especially at the start. Losing a few places now. Being overtaken by Schumacher there then. I think I'm fighting with Grosjean. I seem to have got a penalty, I'm not quite sure what that's for. Maybe he spun someone maybe at the at the hairpin. I'm not totally sure though. It was a bit of odd, a bit of, a, a bit of, odd, of an odd penalty that. Coming down to the chicane now. Blake hard attempt to turn in. A bit tentative there. Getting used to the heavy fuel load in the car and the setup, making sure that they don't make stupid mistakes and uh, lose the front wing. Clipping the cone there. I'm sure I'll do that a few more times in this race. Always happens. Going in to take my drive through penalty now. Looks like is that Lykinen ahead of me there? Looks like he's got one as well. Not sure what he got his for. But um either way. Have to just watch the cars go flying past on the top left corner there. Hopefully it won't come out too far down the field. Looks like they're spread out fairly well already. Put the fuel onto lean while I was in the pits. Put it back up to standard now. See where I come out. So it's got the vest in front of me, so I'm in 15th, not going. Try and go around him on the outside here, but not quite going to manage it. I'll see what I can do with the, from this 15th position. It's always difficult to overtake in Monaco in real life and in the game, especially in without getting a penalty in the game um, but it's always a good challenge as well it's good fun so should be a good race trying to fight my way back up in the field here through the tunnel for the second time use a bit of cares put on the rich fuel mixture again break late into the chicane to it out break the rest I clipped the barrier a little bit he's nudging at my wheel and not much space but managed to make it without another penalty so that's always good Cleanly through that corner. Last cast now. Nodes now coming out onto this, out into this straight. So starting lap three in position 14. Where do you think I'll finish? Feel free to put a prediction in the comments section below. Be interesting to see if anyone gets it right. It's always hard to predict. Especially when I'm diving, probably get another five penalties or something, or lose my front wing. But either way, good fun. So, if you look back at the 2012 race here in Monaco last last year, won by Mark Webber in the Red Bull, third year in a row that oh, Red Bull had won the Monaco Grand Prix. Hopefully, it will be someone different this year. Bit boring if it's always Red Bull winning. Mercedes are looking sh looking strong in the practices. I'm recording this on the Friday night so I'm not sure about the qualifying results so maybe they'll be able to take it, who knows. Last year's pole position was Mark Webber with a 1 minute 14.381 which is a pretty decent time. It's possible to get a, a 1 minute 14 on here but wait and see if I can get any of them today. Fastest lap in the race was set by Sergio Perez in the Sauber, as he was then, now at McLaren, in a 1 minute 17.2. So, I've already already hit the 117s, 117.7 here, so getting towards Sergio's uh, quick quickest lap of the race, not too bad. 
sitting in position 13 now, following the Cardo coming down to the hairpin. Slight nudge of his back there. Got to watch. It's always a dodgy one now. Engineer doesn't sound happy with that move. Too aggressive, he says. Try to leave the car with some space there on the inside, not push him into the barrier, but both got cleanly through. Tires are starting to wear out and the engine's looking hot. Need to try and cool that if I can. Always a problem in Monaco, the engine. The engine heat, the air intake in a Formula One cars is, is just used just from the speed of the car, not actually any fans or anything. So in a circuit where it's quite slow like Monaco, you can get a bit of a problem with your, with your uh, engine overheating. It's quite a slow circuit, not, you know, not, it's only about 45% full throttle, so it can be, a, can be an issue. Tire wear shouldn't be too bad. Um, generally it's a one-stop race, maybe two stops, but mostly one stop. I think last year it was a one stop which made mainly. So could be quite good. Uh, there goes left end plate of my front wing. Only took five laps, not good. Running a little bit wide in that corner there as a result. So he's does affect you in a few corners if you lose your front wing in Monaco. It's not the worst track to lose a bit of front wing though. Generally I don't go in to fix it, but it's a wee bit difficult when you if you lose your left end plate and you're kind of turned right on these corners, you do tend to find a wee bit of understeer. It's there for a reason, so. Try not lose the other end plate before I pit. It's past the swimming pool now. I'm clipping that cone once again. As I said, I imagine I'll do that a few more times. Coming up to the start finish state now. We clip of the barrier, but managed to get through. Sand Vosi there. Going up Bolivage. Coming towards Casino. Casino Square, just pass it there. Coming down to Mirabeau Hot, and then into the hairpin. Sometimes called the Grand Hotel hairpin. Coming past Porte into the tunnel now. Just going through these corners name by name. <laughs> Coming up to Nouvelle Chicane. Then to backs next up. This left hander here is to back. Corner 12 from the track. And then into the wee chicane here, which is effectively known as the Louis Chiron. And then past the pool. And that was the last cast I've just went through there. And then Anthony the Noakes. And onto the start finish state to start another lap in Monaco. So far, so good. That was a good lap there, 116.9, so that's beating Sergio Perez's fastest lap of a 117.2 from 2012. Still got a long way to go if I want to equal uh, Mark Webber's pole position of 114.3 though. So, wait and see if I can get anywhere near that. Up to position 11 now, P11's not, not too bad. Just about catching Senna, not far off him now. Only a couple more laps until I go for a pit stop, then pitting at lap 9. Always sounds good going through the tunnel. Good corner to overtake here, try and go down the outside, successfully hold it, leave him a little bit of room. And there you are, safely, safely through. So far, so good. Monaco Grand Prix was first held in 1929. 
So it's being, this will be the 71st year of its being held. Which is quite something, really. A very popular race on the, on the calendar. A favourite of m many drivers. Always a special one to win. The driver with the most wins in Monaco is actually Ayrton Senna with six wins. There was a period in the 1980s into the early 90s when uh, Senna and Prost were the only two people to actually win the Monaco Grand Prix. I think that was a period of ten years maybe, nine years. So good pedigree. Prost has four wins, Senna has six, so they always liked a good rivalry of those two, so Senna is winning it in that one. Graham Hill comes second on victories in Monaco with five, and Schumacher equals that with five as well, so some, some very good drivers there. Hill very good in the 60s, Schumacher 90s, 2000s. Prost and Senna, 80s and 90s. Covers good periods of uh, Formula 1 history, that. As you can see, in the back in the race, in the, in the virtual world, I'm now up to P8. Some people have started pit stopping, which helps, and I'm chasing Hulkenberg before I go in the pits. Try and overtake him, maybe. See what I can do. On his tail, heading into the tunnel, so... See if I can maybe outbreak him into the chicane coming up down the end of the tunnel here, so have to wait and see. Use the cares as always, leave a wee bit for the, the start finish today or just ahead of the chicane maybe because I'm pitting so I might not want to keep it for a straight I won't actually go down but couldn't manage to get past them there. Yep, using the cares here to try and get past them. Nice into the back there, nice, nice overtaking spot in the game and certainly. You have to hold your nerve, it can be a bit a bit slidey in that corner though, but if you do it right, you can get some good overtakes there reliably. And into the pits we go. Lean mix and into the pit box. New front wing and nose section. New tyres. Prime tyres on. And away we go. Six second stops, not bad for a front wing and tyres really. Being followed by the Sauber. Kobayashi. No longer in Formula 1, of course, Kobayashi. But unfortunately, he was a popular guy. Maybe he wasn't quite as... Didn't, maybe he wasn't quite as successful as he would have hoped, but uh, even so. He's always seemed like a decent enough guy. But it's all about who has the most money with them these days and whatnot as well. So, maybe he'll be back someday, maybe not. Try and warm up these tyres and not spin or lose at the end. Always a bit of an issue when you get new tyres. You can see on the right hand side there the temperature is still cold, denoted by the blue. And as I say that, they're losing losing the rear end. Almost getting overtaken by Kobayashi, side by side into the tunnel. I think, yep, looks like I've got the speed on him there, so that's good. Keeping brakes warm on this circuit can always be a bit of an issue just because there's a lack of hard braking opportunities so if you in Formula 1 if your brakes aren't hot enough you can find it very difficult to actually slow the car effectively and on a circuit like Monaco that could be a problem if you go straight into a barrier a lot of tracks these days especially the newer ones like Austin and Abu Dhabi have big runoff areas tarmac runoff areas concrete runoff areas so it's safe to go off but Monaco no chance very few runoff areas you're lucky if you can get one of those. Trying to pass Hulkenberg for, Berg for the second time recently. Clipping him and then clipping the barrier, not brilliant. Difficult. Just try and keep up with him and overtake him next opportunity. Good having a full front wing again. If you can feel the difference. to use the cares and try and overtake Hulkenberg here. It's a back back marker in the way, so it's not helpful. But we managed to navigate both of them. Hulkenberg and the back marker block, so away we go into the chicane. 
blue flags going everywhere. He's hitting a few back markers. He's been blocking the militia, I think. So back there, and maybe someone else in front up here. I'm not sure. I've got Maldonado, and then I've got someone else. I'm not quite sure if it's a back marker. It looks like a Veno. I think a Lotus. So Lotus Veno. So I don't think it is. Cut that corner slightly there, but it can always be a wee bit of an issue. If you hit it slightly wrong, you can lose the back end and end up hitting the hitting the barrier on the left hand side, which is obviously going to cause you some damage. You can also spin, I've done that a few times, smash my nose into the right hand side of the track. It's again not useful. Close to Maldonado here, maybe try and overtake him in the tunnel as I did with Hulkenberg previous lap. Don't seem to be able to get much of a run out off him though, so see if I can outbreak him here. Nicely done. Well, it looks like he spun. I think he clipped my rear, rear tyre. I don't think the pass was fair enough, but he clearly didn't feel that way. Flipping the Cronons again, following Grosjean. As close as a... As much of a home Grand Prix as Grosjean can get these days. Him and other French drivers like Pick. Used to be Mani Coors in, in France, but no longer. So you only get the Monaco Grand Prix in Monte Carlo. So Basically France. It's uh, just a small principality on the south, south coast. Southeast corner of France. So it is pretty much France, but not not officially. They do speak French though, so <laughs> there's that. Nice place, Monaco. But then, South France is a nice place in, in its entirety. So, nice, sunny, warm, good beaches, nice ice cream. What's not to like? Beaten to Monaco, walked through the tunnel, walked to the track. Quite an experience. So we shop in the end of the tunnel there on the left hand side where I actually bought a wee model of the McLaren from the 80s that Senna used to drive. Bit of random trivia there for you. <laughs> Cleanly past Gojon there. Up to 7th, not far behind Weber now. So far so good. Not lost any of the wing, holding my own, ta overtaking steady. So that's that's good. Ah, uh, well, just as I've been talking the previous lap about losing your rear end and hitting that right-hand barrier, I just did a nice example of what you can do. Luckily enough, I managed to s keep the front wing attached, but so it wasn't as terrible as it can be. But even so, I've lost position and quite a lot of time, I'd imagine up to Goujon and Weber who I had been chasing quite close. So yeah, I'm now four seconds behind Goujon again. It's not brilliant. Five seconds off what I was last lap. Have to try and bring that back as quickly as I can. There's only six laps left of this 25% race. Of course in real life there's uh, 78 laps of the Monaco Grand Prix and um, the track length is just over two miles, 2.075 miles which is fairly short, but of course it is a state circuit around the nice place of Monaco, so not custom built, and it's, as I said it's been going on since 1929, so there's been talk recently of maybe editing it slightly to make it safer, but I saw, I saw today that Hamilton was saying that he wouldn't want that, there's too many safe tracks, and he prefers it when there's a grass grass just behind the curb or you know a bit of a bit of a problem I don't know how to say it a bit of danger I think is the way he put it and in Monaco you certainly have that you've got barriers like next year inches away from the barriers and so it really is a good old style track although they don't have the hay, 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 bear, hay bales anymore as they used to which was clearly a bit unsafe um, not just for fire, but also they're a bit useless, really. Used to have hay bales just straight ahead here, where they've now got the 
tires or whatever that was. So, so yeah, just heading into the tunnel. No hay, hay bales in sight anymore, but I think that's a, probably for the best. Really. Jesus, managed to spin there. Now that is a weird one. An eclipse, you know, I don't know. Try to spin back round. It's a bit bad. Don't know how I managed to spin there. I'm not really sure what happened. Never done that before. That's a new one. The tires shouldn't be worn out or anything, so I don't really know. I lost, not turned in correctly there either. It's a bit. A couple of mistakes there, including including the previous. Quite a while back now, but when I spun at the start of the start of the lap, so it's quite a few mistakes in that one lap. It's not very good at all. So dropped down to 11. For, what was it? It was a seventh, like maybe at my best there. So only four laps to go. So hopefully managed to pull it back, but I'm not sure. Chasing Senna anyway, so maybe try and take it over. Take him over in the tunnel or something. Let's see. If you're close enough into the tunnel here, you can make a good attempt at an overtake through the tunnel using the slip steam and whatnot, but otherwise, you have to try and outbreak them into the chicane. And as we've seen, that can sometimes cause some trouble if they don't recognise you've been there. That was certainly committed. Very committed. Oh, and there goes the front wing. Outbreak myself there. That was desperation stuff, I think, really. But, on the plus side, I did overtake him. <laughs> Luckily he didn't turn in, because I was flying through there, I was committed. But, oh well. Only a few laps left, so see if I can catch Kobayashi in the Sauber ahead of me. Will be a wee bit more difficult with the tyres starting to weigh out. Fuel, not having any spare fuel to use in the rich mixture, and also front wing being damaged. So that's none of that's ideal, of course, but make the best of what you've got. It's only a game after all, and see what we can do. So, 20, 2013 Monaco Grand Prix. Who do you think is going to win then? As I say, the last three years it's been won by a Red Bull. So that's. Uh, Weber's won it twice in 2012 and 2010. Vettel's won it once in 2011. Um, if I had to pick a Red Bull, I'd go for Weber. I personally prefer Weber over Vettel. Just something about him. But they're both good drivers. Although there's obviously quite a strong debate against Vettel, but I think they're all good drivers. So, the. There goes the other bit of the front wing. That's not useful. Just catching Kobayashi now, so I'll be in his dirty air, losing a bit of downforce and whatnot anyway. And now a really damaged front wing is not going to help with turning at all, so I'm going to be struggling for the next couple of laps until the finish, which isn't far off. Side by side up Bolivage here. Will I be able to take him? Yes. Cleanly passed him there. That was good. Held on there. Beautifully done. Can I get past Hulkenberg? I seem to have overtaken Hulkenberg a number of times today, but every time I keep coming back up to him, so... Yeah, need to try and make it stick at some point. See if I can get past Hulkenberg before the end. As I was saying, Red Bull have won the Grand Prix the last three years in a row, so I'm hoping someone else will manage to do it. Mercedes are looking strong in the practices, so... They've, d they've qualified well so far, Rosberg's had two in a row, so if, he's, if maybe he can get a three in a row, that'd be the first of his career for three poles in a row. Be good to see. I like it. I'm having having good fun watching Mercedes improve as a team, it's good fun. Seeing a, a new team doing well, it's a pity McLaren aren't doing well in the McLaren car in this, but they've not done great, although they have actually won the most uh, races for a constructor. It's McLaren who's won the most races in Monaco in historically, but in recent years it's not. They've not won it in a few years now. I think Hamilton won it four or five years ago, was it maybe the last time? There's no Button won it, but when he won it, it was Braun. Um, and that would have been 2009. That was the Braun year before Mercedes had overtook Braun, so. That was a classic year when Button won it. Running down the straight because he parked in the wrong place. 
in Monaco, I think you generally park in, on the street itself in front of the Royal Box and Button went and parked in the pit or something in the same place as all the other cars so had to sprint along with his helmet on and everything. <laughs> Be nice to see Button doing well again this week weekend, but I'm not really sure how McLaren have managed to do. They've really not been impressive. Trying desperately and to get past Hulkenberg, there's not not long left, about a lap and a half. Trying to go down to his outside here, cutting that chicane. Oh, and, oh, he smashed into. Oh dear. Yeah, that was awkward. Had to let them all back through there to sort of avoid getting a penalty. And I've got a penalty. I'm not quite sure what happened. I know a few of them were going into the into the pits, or at least one Hulkenberg was, but I'm not quite sure how I got a penalty there. I don't know if someone clipped me or if it was because I nudged the nudged one of the cars coming into the uh, Noakes corner there, but. Yeah, it's just, just going from bad to worse now. Started well, got a penalty, fought back, it was going well. Now I smashed my wing up badly and got a penalty. I'm really not gonna really not gonna finish well here. Final lap though, last time in the hairpin, having a bit of problems with understeer getting down there with this wing. Just going slowly now. Nursing the car home almost, trying to keep Senna behind me, but tires are pretty worn out. Front wing's damaged in eighth, but I'm um, obviously going to drop back quite a bit. Probably a 20 second penalty, I think, I'll be added on. So that could take me, I don't know, maybe 15, maybe maybe higher, I don't know. I'm not quite sure how far back everyone is on this, but um, see if you got your prediction correct. Maybe you predicted that I would uh, fail miserably and get a few penalties along the way and smash up the front wing, I don't know. Enjoy Monaco, it's usually one of my better tracks, but oh well. So that's us coming along the state for the last time. We bit of a wiggle, I think, is in order. There we are. <laughs> and yes, so that's 14th. Oh well, not too bad with the penalty included. Finished 8th, 14th with the penalty. Did you get that right? I don't know, it'll be interesting to see what if you did or not. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my... Uh, slight history and information on the Monaco Grand Prix. I'll, if you like these, I'll uh, try to do one for each Grand Prix. So yeah, thank you. I hope your prediction was correct. And please watch again and subscribe for more. Thank you.